You know, I've been growing the same stuff for years, for years. When it comes to different cultivars and comes to trying different things, I definitely like to, but uh, when it comes to growing different things, I really don't like to take that gamble on harvesting something after two months that I just don't like. You know, having different cultivars that don't have the terps that I'm after, or flavonoids, overall effects, let alone growth characteristics, it's just something I normally don't risk. But I feel like I got some room, so I may as well try some new stuff. And for me, I've been growing the same stuff for the past damn near decade. It's time to try some new genetics. So here's a few things that I take into consideration when I'm looking for new genetics. This episode is brought to you by AC Infinity. If you're ready to nurture your green thumb and grow the garden of your dreams, look no further because AC Infinity has got you covered. Whether you're breaking it down to get into individual pieces or you're getting the entire AC Infinity grow kit, AC Infinity brings everything you need to unleash your gardening potential. Use discount code CLTV at checkout to save on all AC Infinity products. One, how long is it gonna grow? I don't wanna have something that's gonna take too long to finish. When you're looking at something with sativa-like characteristics, it could take anywhere from 10 to 14 weeks in flower, and that just sucks. The thing with those cultivars, a lot of times they'll have these unique terpenes that you don't normally find from those seven to nine weekers. You will see some crosses from those indica-like characteristic cultivars, the sativa-like characteristic cultivars, and you may find something in the middle, but for the most part, it's a lot harder to dial in that exact terpene that you're looking for without sacrificing a little bit of that time in your garden. Now in a situation when you have a grow box or something really limited like this, or even a grow tent, you're going to want to have to have something that doesn't have too crazy of a stretch or when you flip it over into flower, it's not going to double or triple in size. A lot of times having those sativa like cultivars, that can happen. So if you're growing in something like this Hey Abby 420 edition, those cultivars may not be ideal for you. Another factor that I consider is, of course, the growth characteristics. Now if a cultivar is going to be a real headache to trim or a strain if you want to still call it that, I barely even want to grow it honestly. Too bushy, too scraggly, too anything, I just really am not a big fan of. After growing for 16 years, I've really gotten picky to what I like, and especially when the market isn't necessarily as lucrative as it used to be. So now essentially, I'm just growing for myself and my patient. That's about it. So if it's not something I can grow easier in the garden and is gonna be more tailored to my grow space, I don't want nothing to do with it. Now, and then for me, one of the biggest factors is definitely gonna be the overall flavonoid and terpene. Now, if it's something that doesn't even at all hit the mark for me, I don't want to smoke it, let alone what I want to grow it. When it comes to a cultivar that has some sort of a citrusy or floral or fruity, that, that's just not me. And it might be somebody else. You may love that kind. But me personally, I'm looking more for that earthy, gassy, diesel -y, nasty, almost armpit kush funk. And I know that's not for everybody. But if a cultivar doesn't have that, everything else I've talked about and how it grows is irrelevant for me, completely irrelevant. Now, it may not be irrelevant for you, of course, because we have different opinions and our opinions differ and our wants will differ. But when it comes down to selecting that cultivar, you're still going to want to find something that you like. But of course, you know, if you're not as picky as myself, maybe this isn't a determining factor. Maybe it's going to be something more about the yield. Now, if you're after a heavier yield, of course, you can train your plants and you can work them more. But in general, a heavily sought after thing for a lot of growers is something that naturally yields pretty well. Now, in the past, I've grown cultivars that are crossed with critical masses or big buzz, and those oftentimes do yield pretty well. But again, they lack in other areas like terpenes and flavonoids, so I usually don't shoot for those ones. On the other side of things, you may find cultivars that don't yield good at all that maybe aren't gonna make the cut in your grow. Now, Headbanger, again, yes, that's been one of them. The particular phenotype that I had just was not a good yielder. I'd average 2.5 to three disease at a time, unless I did heavy, heavy training, and when you're running multiple cultivars, didn't make sense for me. So that one didn't make the cut after about 10 years of growing it. Now, could it have grown better in somebody else's environment? Potentially. That's the beautiful thing about gardening is someone's touch may be a little bit more golden than yours, but it's usually the environmental conditions and how they treat that overall cultivar. And finding different ways to manipulate that plant or to crop seed that plant to work in your advantages, clearly that's the goal for most of us growers, but not everybody knows how to do that. Now, if you're looking to crop steer, you're looking to understand what that is a little bit, check out the video in one of these cards up here or below in the description. Now, one of the biggest factors for me is definitely gonna be accessibility. There's been a lot of cultivars where I just cannot find them, and the only way I can get it is from some sketchy, risky website that I just would rather not deal with, or from somebody who claims they have that cut, and I just don't believe they do. I gotta call bullshit. I'll look for something that has comparable terpenes or flavonoids, that way I can actually get something within that realm of characteristics that I'd actually like. A lot of times what's hot in the market may not be readily available for you, but over time a lot of these cultivars do become more popular and everybody has them. Prime example would be Sherb Cream Pie or Sherb Cake from Sea Junkie Genetics. That was one that seemingly everybody wanted. Well, 
Now everybody has. I'm gonna continue to grow it, but others in the commercial market may not want to because, well, competition. Luckily for us home growers, that's not as much of an issue. The main thing is you wanna set yourself up for success. So if this cultivar doesn't grow correctly in your space, doesn't fit in your area, harder to maintain, isn't your turf, or harder to find, it may not even be worth it. But just know, just like I say, there's plenty of fish in the sea, there's plenty of genetics out there on the web. Only after growing cultivars for years have I figured out what I actually like and what I don't like. Being a consumer and being a consumer who's a grower definitely has been advantageous. But as the market shifts, you gotta be able to shift with it. And these are just a few things that I look for when I'm trying to find good genetics. What about yourself? Drop them below in the comment section. With that being said, it's your boy Rob from CLTV. Stay lifting. Are you a grower? Are you tired of lugging around too many bottles? Is it too expensive? Is it so confusing? Tired of reading feed charts? Well, guess what? There is an easier way. Introducing the Stash Blend. You can now get your bag of Stash Blend. Premium additives that you can add to your garden using just about any base nutrients. Go to stashblend.com and get your order today.